Hey guys, and welcome back to Shadow Empire with me, Time and Tactics. That was an update today, so I'm playing a newer version of the game, 1.20.f, I think it is. Hopefully nothing broke. It looks like everything is working still, so that is good news. We're looking at Hexa Peak. That is our one and only zone that we have, as you can see down here. And we already looked at our models. They are looking fantastic here. These are looking really good based on the design the numbers that we have here. The one that we maybe want to upgrade, potentially based on the numbers anyway, would be the hauler, but I don't think I need a truck right now. We have more urgent problems, right? We have this Free Folk Battalion over here. The Free Folk Marauders. We know a little bit about them. We think there are 600 of them there. Probably wrong, because our weaken value is pretty low. They're not very good, but they're okay-ish defending. So we want to take care of them and push them away from our capital so that we don't have that problem with fear. If you look at Hexapeak, I think it's over here, isn't it? Yeah, you can see negative two there is our net difference in changes in happiness because of the, the high danger from the free folk. If you can push them out, I would feel much better. Now, Recon, like I said, is 71. We don't really know. We have a couple units and I didn't actually move them fully. What I'm thinking about is surrounding him as much as possible. Get all five units. We only have five, right? Let's look at the order battle. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. So all we can do is five. We could have had six otherwise. So maybe getting, well, not maybe, I think I need to get more units. Not just militia, but units that I control directly. So we haven't seen anything down here. We know there's some radiation, but let's send them up and surround. And looking at the terrain... There is, this is not open terrain, that's agricultural. Looking at the pop-up here, we can see that the motorized tanks get a negative modifier when they attack into agricultural. Well, we're not going to be attacking into, actually we're going to be attacking into this one here, in Clayton itself. And there we get an even bigger negative modifier, negative 50%, as you can see there. And um, motorized will have not tanks, but they will have units that's going to be affected by that. Let's see. Yeah, we have the truck. We have the bikers. I think so. These bikers here. Mm, they're going to be affected by that. Yeah, so they're wheeled. And if you look here again. Motorized. That's what wheeled falls into, I think. Troop type, right? Movement type. Wheeled. Yeah, so it costs more. Well, 25 to get into that hex as well. Not that it matters that much. We need to take care of this unit. We do need to take care of it. So what I'm thinking about, fortunately, we have one. Our strongest unit here is one that is not affected by as much, I think at least, by the bad terrain. Let's see. Yeah, infantry, no negative modifier to uh, for having a river there or for having a forest there. So I'm going to move up. I think I'm going to move this one up to... What is this here? This is Plains Grassy. Okay, that's a good one. That's a good one for them to be the mechanized. But I can't go this turn. It costs too many AP. 45, you've looked down here. You can see it costs 45 to go there. We don't have 45. We have... Let me just find it again. Where is it? There. We have 40. It has to stay here. What about the militia here? Can't move. We can move this one up into... What is this? Ruins? No, that's ruins here, right? Yeah, that's ruins there. This is Plains Grassy. Let's move the third battalion up there. Yeah, let's do that. Let's move him up here. And let's surround him if we can surround him. Okay, I think that's pretty good. All right, we have one more unit here. I mean, if he moves down here, that's okay, I think. The ruins, what about the... That's bad for... Bad for motorized and tanks, so our bikers would have a problem there. Anyway, this one can't move up yet, so we'll have to wait with him. But I can move this one up. I think we should move him up. We'll move him up here, and we'll take this one. Maybe what we'll do is move this one into the ruins. Yeah, let's do that. And then this one up here. And now if I were to attack, which I don't think I really can. We can look at the concentric. No, we can't. We don't have enough units. We don't have any enough... Uh, we don't have enough action points to attack, but next turn we'll, we'll see if we can attack. <clears throat> and I think we're good on supply here as well. There is a... Mm, see if I remember all this stuff now. Um, show color. There is... We can see the points. I think we're within our logistical limits right now. That's where we don't see anything. 
Yeah. Let's see this one. Regime coloring. Now that's not it. Yeah, here, this one. Show the range in which unit operational logistics will be able to pick up supplies. And it's green everywhere, or it's fine, but no special coloring there. Okay, that's good. Now, um, well, that's all I can do. I can't attack this turn. Let's check out what else. I made some notes. In this game, you pretty much have to, I feel like. Well, first of all, I feel I need to get more units. To get more units, we need to get formations. You don't just buy a single unit. Let's see if I have... Can I even do it now? Let's see here. If we select raise formation here. Yeah, this is what a screen I'm remembering from before. On this screen, you can select to raise new formations of units of different sizes. So the first thing you want to do is think about what type and how big it should be. So brigade is the smallest, then core, then army. Uh, we can do it independent though. We could do it independent as well. Independent battalion, regiment, or division. Division being the biggest line. So we could raise one independent battalion if you wanted to. And these are the types. So I'll take that back. We can do one, right? There's a recon battalion here, the buggy. Now, what did we say about our... Was the buggy... The cross billy buggy is very good. Yes, very high stats. Remember, 83 here would be average for an average uh, unit we meet somewhere else. And so all these numbers are great, especially the weapon design. But if we get one with the idea of taking on Clayton, well, the, the terrain here is not very good for that. So... There's a little bit here of open terrain, not very much. That's low mountains. That can't possibly be good. No, it's not good for motorist or mechanized or tanks. So getting, I don't know how useful it's going to be here, actually, to have a tank, even though we have a really good one, right? So let's say we were to race one. Uh, could I race one anywhere? Maybe I could. Um, if I were to say, here's my independent unit. So just the one. Battalion. So they're uh, a single unit instead of a regiment. Well, single unit. A unit that doesn't have very many men in it. It must be a single counter, I think. Anyway, you can up to a division. Now, you can see that what it cost us here. The number of volunteers, industry, metal, and political points. We have 16 political points there. On the left, we can see our first Supreme Headquarter, which we have one right now, has this um, available to it. Looks like we have 102 industry points there. Metal, 92. We're gaining 21, it looks like. And uh, so we could raise that right away. Yeah, 2,900 of these volunteers as well. Yeah, I don't know. So we have a regular independent infantry battalion. We have a motorized one as well. I don't think we need that, though. It costs a lot more in... A lot more in, in industry points. So maybe just basically... Yeah, and yeah, basically an infantry unit because the MG is good, but it's more defensive unit. You're gonna pay. Well, you're gonna pay actually less industry, and less volunteer to get that. But pound for pound, this one here is better when you're defending, and this one is better when we are attacking. I think you get more out of it. You get a thousand versus five hundred. Well, yeah, double the size, right? So that makes sense. You still pay 15 industry here. So maybe get that. If we were to go into the not independent and the smallest unit we can get, the brigade, we get these here, these five. Light infantry brigade will cost us 5,500. We have 2,900. We gain 500. We could try to recruit more and give them a little incentive. You can give them incentive to people to, for people to join, to be volunteers, but I don't know about that. 110 seems like a lot. Machine gun infantry would be defensively better, and then motorized. And what do we say? And as you can tell, by the way, if you didn't realize already, it will be a lot of me <laughs> debating what I should be doing here with myself. But uh, that's the way the game works, and it is. Uh, a, I mean, it's a, it is a fun part to the game, actually, to figure out the right way or the best way to do it. So line troops, remember eighty-three, right? We have one hundred and five ninety-one. They seem good. What did I say? Okay, I brought up my little Excel spreadsheet. I actually have one here to look at my numbers. And these should have been right around 106 if we'd rolled average scores for weapon design and armor design based on these numbers. So it's a little below that, but it's above what we can expect, you know, overall. So 
It is very good still, and the weapon is 105. That's strong. We're going to do a lot of damage. That number here is directly affected by this number, so it is high, as you can see. If you remember, the, uh, the Free Folk Marauders, they had, I think, 10 here and 20 defense, so we are doing pretty well on that. So getting a line troop seems useful. We can also go back out and look and see what we have on these. These rifle militia. Yeah, 10 and 20. Not, what do we have? 26 and 52. We're going to be using the 26 when we attack, right? So let's go back to the map. So I think maybe I do want to do that. Let's keep that thought, right? For now. Let's move now on to and see what else we have. We haven't even looked at everything in the game. I mean, it, it takes a bit to do that. One good screen to go to is the report screen. And there is a ton, and I told you that last time. By, by the way, the help screen is not just help. It gives you information like about the planet. You can go back and look and see where, what you had, like nitrogen, oxygen, argon, carbon dioxide, what's in there. And you can take a look at that after the fact. Same here. So we can look at the temperature here for the crop. I remember that now. Yeah. So if it's below one degree, no production for crops, Terran crops, no xenobiological crops can be done uh, used here. Let's actually take a look at that. I'm curious now. So do I select, yeah, this one here. Temperature is seven degrees here, negative five here, zero. So we're looking at between zero and seven or so. Go back into the reports here. So lowest ideal is 10. You really want that to be between 10 and 30 degrees for Terran crops, okay, which we don't have. We're in, in the north. You can see that by the fact that that's the end of the world there. So there's for more lands to the south, I'm sure. Okay, well, anyway, that's just one little aspect of the game. Uh, then there's more information here, uh, as you can see, also information about how to do certain things. Oh, here, raise regular troops, right, this one. Yep. The smallest formation types. This is pretty good. I wouldn't recommend looking at this, you know? Yeah, and I think we can actually go back in and look at that now. Did we miss anything? We need to have 100% up here. Troops, items, logistics. I think we have all of that. For an independent unit, at least. So we can see here, 100, 100, logistics, zero. We don't have it in that particular hex, I guess, that I selected down here. But if I go up here, I'm hoping I'm right on that. Yep, 100. Okay, we're good. We don't need anything. We're at home when we're producing this one. There's the 1,000, the 20, and the 10, and the 10 that we saw on the previous screen. 20 food as well. And two political points. Okay, we can do that. Um, but I don't think I'm going to do it yet. We're going to be looking. Let's go back. Uh, let's go back. Let's focus on a, looking at our situation. So, overview. Now, there's a lot of information here, and you can spend, I mean, a lot of time looking at this. Empire Dashboard will give us at a glance information. Our different councils that we have, these are the ones that, uh, well, do everything from uh, getting new tech to uh, taking care of security. There's a ton of things here. We don't have very much right now. We only have the Supreme Command Council, the Basic Council, and they operate using the bureaucracy points and you kind of spread them out over all the councils and then they use those to produce different things like this one here generating stratagems which are cards okay so we can see what we get here all right urgent issues do we have anything here general urgent issues no issues nothing here hexapic is high danger 11 yeah right we knew that peter nelson by the way is our secretary providing that information for us cabinet overview again coming back to those councils we have an advisor we need to look at the leaders, I think, pretty quick here. Let's look at that, maybe. Personnel, we can look at this. This looks very good, by the way. And we can look at that in a second. Factions overview. Well, so in the game, there are factions. So all the leaders you have, the ones that are manning the different councils or taking charge of the different units, they may belong to a faction. We have two factions here. Elite, Equality, Party, and the... What is this one? Uh, Syndic Union here. And they have different agendas, like this one here. They prefer, they very strongly prefer the government type. And what, what do we have here? Uh, the politics, we have not government. Uh, no, not government. It's down here, society. They want a society of type government, which we do have. 
this is very good. This could help us as a faction they preferred. The individuals may not prefer it, but I think over time they tend to pick up this as well, as long as they belong to the faction. And we can see Ollie here is the leader of the Syndic Union faction. He has that little uh, symbols on the back, the little flare that goes out behind him. And um, yeah, and then we have the other one. They want commerce and democracy. What do we have? Meritocracy. So that's not good. Commerce. We don't have commerce, right? No, we don't. Yeah. Democracy is up here. We don't have that either. I was thinking about getting that. That's democracy here. Okay, so this one's going to be more tricky. More tricky to do that. Anyway, demand overview. No demands at the moment. And then we can go down and see what we have in the other areas. I don't think we need to look at that just yet. We'll, we'll jump in there, I guess. But let's go back and look at our leaders. I feel that is something you want to do pretty quick. We know we have one, one zone, right? We know we have these military units, and we know our models are looking good. That's the kind of general information so far. Uh, another component to that would be the leaders. And I like to go, if I remember, to here. Yeah, this is a good screen to go to. These are the current leaders. We can get more later. And you can see the background here. We have one, two different factions, the green and the purple. These other two don't belong to a faction. Uh, a good number to look at, and a number that's presented right away, is the capability number. This indicates how, how quickly they will gain experience. And I think that's a pretty big difference between a 1 and a 5, or even a 1 and a 3. So if you have a 1, even if his current skills are high, which they are not, they tend to be lower anyway, he's not going to gain uh, skills very quickly, his levels. It's going to be harder for him to gain that. So right away you want to see what you can do with high levels i think five is the highest and sure enough we actually have a five not sure enough that's unlikely i don't think i've seen a five before he's an advisor let's look at nitra here advisor is pretty low on the totem pole when it comes to leaders and oh look at his ambition so he's very ambitious right but he's in a role where it's pretty low on the totem pole so he's not going to be too happy we look at the relation it says 81 but his natural relation point halfway down, it says 54. Why is that? Well, the prestige is at 27. That is part of the reason. But then, okay, he has other reasons he doesn't. Eventually, he will not like what he's doing here. That's because his profile is a poor match with our profile. It's a value of 6. Why is that? Well, we can look here. He wants enforcement. It goes from negative 3 to plus 3. And plus two is very, he's very much in favor of enforcement and fist and a strong militia. If we look at that here, what do we have? We have meritocracy. What does he have here? He didn't have anything here in the politics, but he has it here in society and in psychology. Society wanted enforcement, right? And we don't go for that. We're going for government right now. And then wanted fist down here, as well as militia. Okay, so we want that to be high for him to be happy. The reason I'm honing in on him is because he's at level 5. He, we may not want to keep him as a, as a lowly advisor. He belongs to the Syndic Union. And we know the Syndic Union kind of fit what we were doing. What did we say they were all about? Go back to the report. Factions, Syndic Union, government. They like government. Nitro here. <clears throat> doesn't care for the government right now, but he might later on. Or he does, doesn't care for the government type of uh, society. He will eventually. Is it worth focusing on him? I think it might be. So anyway, what is he good at? Well, the higher the number, the better, right? And it looks like he, level 39 in investigation. When do we use that? In unrest events, that would be in zone security. So in the zone, he would be helpful for in this investigation okay that's good covert ops is also a strong point of his 45 there okay so that's used in stratagem so when you play different cards and secret service stratagem generation must have skill for director of your secret service we don't have a secret service but he would be a candidate for that interrogation good for a use uh, for a governor dealing with unrest on the rest of them. So this would be good, and this would be good for a, being a governor. Now, the governor is tied to a zone. You already have a governor. 
Victor over here, but Victor is a level one. Let's see, look at Victor. His relation is 76. Naturally, he wants to be at 66. So pretty, he's going to stay pretty high. He likes government and fist. Not super ambitious. I'm wondering if I should take my advisor and put him in this world to make him a little bit happier so our relation doesn't go down so quick and then he can focus on his skill there. I mean, right now it's 81, so I don't think we need to worry about it. This will impact, I think, uh, any roles he makes in the game. You can see how much time I'm spending just doing this, right? This game. <laughs> anyway, uh, it's a good game. So what else do we have? We have him level 5. There's a level 4 secretary. He's unaffiliated, no, fa no faction. If you select him, 87 there. This is what I lo might look at right away. Natural is 42. Why is that? Leader profile again. Militia? Okay. Commerce and democracy. Commerce and... Mo this is going to be a problem. It's going to be a problem. He wants an enforcement and fist. <laughs> the other guy wants... Commerce and democracy. And the way we can affect it, by the way, we can go here. Remember we have the decisions to do? Our ascension speech? That's definitely going to affect it. If we go for this one here, hard and merciless, we can see here he is. Our advisor. He would like it if we go for fist. So he has fist. And our director of the Supreme Council also likes that. So fist. Nobody cares about this one over here. And uh, nobody cares about this one either. So that won't do much. Let's see fist. Who has fist? So nitro is about fist. That's good. What about a level four? No fist, right. Democracy, commerce, militia. They share their fascination with the militia, though. So that, there's that. We also have two level threes. Mindy Allen. Mindy over here. Democracy, enforcement. Absolutely no enforcement. What is her uh, relation here? 58. Oh, look at that. Job prestige. Minus one. Reserve pool. Yeah. Not even it has an actual job. Yeah, there is that. And then we have another level three. That would be Ollie Jackson, our director of the command, uh, Supreme Command Council, which is a very important job. This is like the main guy. And he, again, he wants fist. What is he going to end up with? 63. And you can see Ollie over here is very ambitious as well. 95. Something else you want to keep in mind is the sitting where you're ranking here. If we were to take somebody, like say Ollie, and say, you're no longer going to be the director of Supreme Command Council, the supreme job, He's going to be upset, and other people might also be upset because he's at that pretty high seniority ranking, right? Well, I don't know. Suitability here is 10. Just a general number. What do we say about the others for that? Advisor doesn't have suitability. Our governor. I'm tempted to take him off this here. Suitability is 10. Yeah, I'm tempted to take him off. He has 92 in seniority, only 28. Okay, people might get a little bit upset by taking him off the job. So what you have to do is you have to call him up, tell him you're fired, and then basically put another guy in. In the meantime, before we put the other guy in, everybody, including the new guy, is going to be upset that this guy was fired. So government plus one. Yeah. Okay, there is that. So we, now we know about our leaders. I really don't haven't made up my mind on that yet. What else do we do uh, for... What's the next step? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at our cards, the ones we got at the beginning of the game. They're categorized in different types, and I think you get them based on... It's not random what you get, well, it's random in a way, but you do get... You have a greater likelihood to get, uh, get different cards, depending on what, uh, what your, the makeup of your nation is like. I think you can actually see that in the reports. If we go down, not here, let me find it. Oh, here, Stratagem Generation Overview. So you can see it's stratagems think cards generated by organizations this turn. So we can see that here. So we had a 9% chance to generate a major war card, but I missed a roll. Here, 90% chance to generate send spy. We made the roll. The weight of it was 30,000. So yeah. Okay, let's go back into the cards then. So different categories. Uh, cards against minor regimes. Here's a minor war. What did we do here? Minor Diplomacy Strategy. I don't remember these from before, so I have to look at them. Normally executed by the Foreign Affairs Council Director. We don't have that. If you don't have uh, the right council, then your Supreme Command Council 
direct or will execute. Not as good, but he will still do it. So we can do it against somebody we are at peace with. It's a minor regime that will be a war. Relation between us and them will drop 20. Uh, we'll drop with 20. We'll a minimum drop 230. All your deals and packs will be cancelled. Your fist profile goes up by 10%. Okay, we're not going to do that, right? And it costs 11 political points. Offer protection. What is this one? Minor diplomacy stratagem. Executed by the Foreign Affairs Council again. And what do we get? Against a minor regime. We can offer protection against them. Right, we get, uh, you can see the difficulty there, and we become a protector, 10% relation. Okay, so I guess what that means, we're gonna defend when they are attacked, yeah. Okay, that's the two there. I'm not gonna use them right now. Covert operations, send spy. So for that, we need a secret service council. Director, we don't have that. We could do that. So that's gonna be difficulties 120 minus our relation, and, uh, Difficulty is cut in half against minor zones. Okay, yeah. I don't know if we need to do that. I think it's going to basically get map, the map visible in that zone that we're sending a spy. So we could do that. The nation one, okay, that deals with our nation here. We can recruit a new leader. Executed by the interior council director. We don't have that either. We get somebody who is not fantastic, but it's another leader. We can increase income tax. Now, when it comes to taxes, that reminds me, you can't just, on your own, willy-nilly, just increase or decrease tax. you got to play a card to do it. So we could do that. And here's a decrease as well. Paranoia. It's a free card. By the way, this, this shows what it costs. It's expensive, political points. It's a free card. What happens is you get fate points. The fate points are used for some cards, uh, stratagems. Uh, but a random zone will gain fear. We don't need that. A random zone will be the one zone, right? By the way, we have two of these cards, so we could play it twice. Zones, and this is the fate points here. These are the this number here. We only have one. They're very powerful. Usually only good, I think. There's no negative aspect to them. Labor Day. What happens? To, well, the, uh, the secretary will execute it. <clears throat> and I think it's automatic. Work happiness will increase with 3d10. Okay, so about 15. So that's pretty good. That means we have time in our zone. We can play this later in the zone when it's gone down for after a while if we cannot get rid of that unit. Boomtown, the secretary again. And what happens? Population increased by 10 d 10 times 100. Okay, we could do that, but I don't think we need to. And this one here is going to be too expensive. Gladiators, friendly zone, extra level of arena. Arena is the type of building that will help with entertainment in the zone making ultimately people more happy. And we, we should look at our buildings too, shouldn't we? Anyway, that's the three there. And then we have one more. This is the new stuff. The Maritime Trading House Stratagem. So once we have one card here, it's a liaison, the Economic Council Director, we don't have that, but we can select a Z zone that has some a Maritime Trading House and we can go and check that out actually here. I think this one, uh, zone. Hestia Waters, I believe that would be one. Yeah, and these two here. Yeah, Maritime uh, Trading House here. You can see down here. So there is that. Get in contact with them. And then we get, hopefully, in contact with them, and we can talk to them. We're not right now trying to move across the water or do anything naval, I don't think. Okay, well, I say we take a look at the zone then. Time is just flying. 30 minutes? Close to it. Okay, anyway. So let's look. Hexapeak is here. If we select assets and select this button over here, we can see all of the different buildings we have in this zone. Another way to do it is to go to the management screen and select assets here. And it's almost a little bit better, I feel like, because you have multiple zones. We can see them down here. So what do we have? We have the city itself. And I need to refresh myself, so I think to take a little bit of time. If we click on that, we have a level one high command bunker. That will give us political bonus points to these points here which is very helpful and bureaucracy points those are used by the councils so if you want to do another uh, model or if you want to do uh, tech research we're going to be using these BPs okay so you can get to level 2 here uh, it's going to cost us to get that metal 50 IP 4 turns or 4 rounds to do so a long time I would love to get this one that is a big increase from 10 to 40 but yeah we'll see that is the one we have here. You can see what we get from it right now. 
25 particle points and 10 BP. There are 600 workers there, and it takes a bit of energy. In the city, that's the that's the only. This is the only building that is state owned, publicly owned, meaning we have direct control over it. These other ones, the brown ones, are privately owned. We only get a very small portion of them if we don't nationalize them. This is a farm level three, which is good, right? They're going to produce. Um, what do they produce? 100 food and 900 private food. So they, the way that works is that if we don't do anything, they're going to take care of business here anyway and feed people, making people happy. And we don't have to worry about it, which is a good thing. But we can't directly control what they do. Here we get 100 food that we can use for our military, for instance. But if we had our own farm, that would be better. We get much more food that we can directly apply to our units, for instance. And then there's a scavenging site, level one. You can see it's producing quite a few things here. It produces, uh, what, 31 metal, no, 57 metal. Yeah, uh, 57 metal for us. 31 private metal that we can't use, but it's used by other private things going on in that zone. And private oil, private credits, we could nationalize it and get all that for ourselves. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. You gotta put them over ruins, basically. There's a transport hub. Oh yeah, that deals with, oh, logistics. I didn't forget about it. Logistics in this game is huge. It's fun. It's huge, though. I mean, as far as it, it impacts a lot of things, you got to have somewhat of a handle on it. We produce truck points <clears throat> and, and uh, action points for trucks to deliver uh, things across our zone. We haven't had to worry about it right now because it's so small, frankly. And then this is new, I think. <clears throat> Isn't this new? I think it is. This is a harbor. Without a harbor, you cannot talk to a maritime trading house. I don't think so anyway, um, and, but they can load and unload their vessels here. So I think we're gonna get a visitor from a maritime trading house. And if they're edible marine animals on the planet, which I don't think we have, we can uh, find local private fishing trawlers, smugglers, yeah, whatever. And finally, we have a carbon reactor here. This is a special building. I don't think it's in the city itself. You can check that by leaving here, going out on the map and now the free folk are here as well but we can check this one here it is actually in the city itself this carbon reactor it's a special let's say hex perk is it i think they call them hex perks yeah hex perk it's like a bonus thing uh, ancient miniature liquid energy reactor has survived and is still semi-operational energy plus 100. okay good as long as it's connected to our city it's going to con continue to deliver which is great it's going to be connected forever and we can see here energy 280. Okay, that's good. All right, so where does this all mean? I don't know. This is just... We have to see here. If I leave them like this now, we can't do anything with the military. Let's let's look at that first. They have to stay where they are for this turn. I would love to go to the next round before I end this, right? Uh, what else do we do? Well, we have a decision to make. This one here, Ascension Speech. Do we want to go for Fist? I wasn't going to go for it. And if you look here, this is another thing I haven't showed you. But if you look here, if you hover over, let's say, Fist, these are the things that will happen once our numbers here to the right, 33, goes high enough. We will gain special benefits. And I think we can see it in the management screen as well by going to here. Yeah, so Fist down here. This one here, volunteerism. If we get fist to at least 40 we have a chance of getting it and you can see this one here is qualified we can get this one here these two these three things um and you can see the benefits here so there's a lot to be thinking about here a lot to think about anyway the back to the decision let's not get sidetracked so we have fist do we want to go for fist yeah well the benefit would be that the director supreme council and uh, Altair over here, our advisor, would like it quite a bit. Let me see. So we know that he has a, like a plus two for Fist, yeah. And our Supreme Council, was it Ollie? Yeah, he also likes it. Those two like it. Nobody else hates it, so it's not a negative to do it, except to kind of lose a little bit. Um, we're going to try to, it's going to take over, take the place of mind basically and maybe i will do that to get that number up a little bit he would gain a little bit of relation keeping him happy i'd do it let's go for it now so anyway 
Yeah, let's go for it. We're going to be hard and merciless. Yes, sir. Okay. So what happened here? Well, Ollie Jackson gained two points, and Nitro gained four, and the profile of Fist gained 14. So now we have 47. One below mind. Okay, and then we have one decision. We don't have to make it. We could go to the next round. We could just wait. But we have an option. Our secretary is telling us that we want to add a council. It's going to cost us political points. Oh boy, what do we need? Well, one way to think about it is if you have poor units and you have uh, poor designs and you have an enemy uh, next door, you may want to go for something that creates better units, the model design council. But I think we have good enough units. We don't have to worry about that. Economic council, maybe we want to go for that. Yeah, the economic council. Cost four. Now, um, the economic council, if you go look at the management screen and go to tech, we can see here, economic is anything with a little blue background EC here. So we have the green stuff here. <clears throat> if we get an economic council, we can start working on these. Power plant, university, these are buildings that can go into a city. And then solar energy, hospital, barracks. Barracks. I say maybe we'll go for economic. Feels like it would be a good thing to have. Military research is a good one there as well, because military research will give us, uh, uh, I'll show you the type here, different types we can get. Right now we only have, you know, uh, the machine gun infantry and that stuff, but well, let's go for economic. I can't, uh, I don't know why I would pick anything else at this point. Let's go for the economic council. Yes, sir. So let's see, it's going to take a turn to do that. Wait a minute, there are protests in Hexapeak? The people in Hexapeak have taken to the streets. They're disrupting the local order, causing unrest. What do we do? Sending unrest, sending unrest, sending troops to end this protest. Autocracy goes up. Nobody really likes that autocracy anyway. Or it costs one political point. Or we spend 600 credits. Give in some to me. Can't do that. Calm down the protesters by talking to them. Oratory role. Um, who is doing this? The governor. He would do it. We don't have to do anything. This is something we can leave, and then they're going to be, I think, uh, you can see that we can go to the next turn. But I don't think I want to do that. Unrest plus 20. Maybe I do want to do it. Oratory roll for the governor. Skill level zero. Yeah, Victor. That's not know anything. And then we need to have that. We need to have versus the 41, I guess. He has to roll 1d100, average 50, plus 10, 60. So on average, he should make it. Unrest meritocracy calm down talking to me so we'll go down maybe meritocracy goes up by six that's this one here i'm tempted to do it we could also if we wanted to we could switch him out for somebody else takes a turn or two then do it but i don't want to wait that long let's talk to them and see what happens Roger that. i went out in the streets to parley with the protesters oratory roll of 93 yeah made it critical success looking somewhat sullen everybody went home after i spoke Unrest did not increase. So if it hadn't been a critical success, it probably would have gone up maybe anyway a little bit. Meritocracy 6, which I think is okay. I think that is fine here. So we're at 54 now. Let's look at that 54. If you look at the list there, meritocracy 40 and 50, we can now maybe get stratagems, cards that deal with meritocracy. Okay, we've done that. Is that all we're going to do? I think I might just... Well, do we want to get a formation? Do we want to get an independent unit right now? I'm tempted. I'm very tempted to do it. Maybe we'll raise one independent. I mean, how bad can it be to get one independent? Even if it's a mistake, I'll say we will get one infantry battalion. <clears throat> We're going to be taking away... Mm, let me see here. There. Raise formation. We're going to be taking away a little bit here of uh, industry, which I think is used for buildings as well. Volunteers, which is fine, I think. So one counter, a thousand units, maybe basically strength 10, but it's going to be a good good unit to have. I think I want this one. We'll go for it and see. And I can't remember, do we get it right away? Maybe not. So we'll select it here. We should get it right away, I think, but maybe it takes a while to fill it up. I think that's what it is. Uh, race formation, we can do that right now. Okay, so we did that. Oh, it's here. Do we have units here? First independent. Oh, we got them right away. So did we actually have 
Um, do we have units at the SHQ? We can look and see what the SHQ has. It doesn't have any units there. But um, so we got we have a hundred we have a thousand there now. Looking at them, you can see their value is much higher. Our militia is ten and twenty. If we use this one to attack with, we're going to be in great shape. Not great shape, but we're going to be better off. You can see what they have here: a slug thrower. We can increase that, but um, not yet. We can't change that model without actually going and research. By the way, if you want to look at all the stats, there's more stats here to dig into and to see how we arrived at different numbers. Anyway, so that unit is going to be available next turn. We don't have any AP right now. Let's say we go for the next round, so at least you can see your turn, right? It's been long enough. Let's go for that now. And here is round two, and I just skipped through it, uh, but we get notification here. There are 400 infantry. We can go take a look at infantry we killed. We can go take a look at that right away. But first, actually, let's go and see what we get here. We're entering a time of bureaucracy. We knew that. Uh, gained 200 bureaucratic bonus points. That's good. It takes another 11 turns to come into full force. Okay, good. Blitzkrieg. Oh, we got a card here. This one might be good. Mechanized forces attack 60%. Mechanized. Motorized? Not, no, I don't think so. Maybe just mechanized. Action points plus 30. For them, I guess. Overall defensive power minus 30. Uh, okay, we'll look at this one. That might be useful. Goal expansion. Okay. Our secretary is saying, at the start of the turn we control 18 hexes. If possible, we want to expand. Yeah, we do want to expand. I know we do, but let's see. Now, what happened last turn? Well, we can take a look. We can look at the... We look at the history first here. This is basically a replay of what happened. So when we end the game, normally you get to see this automatically. I turned that off and I want to watch it here with you guys at the same time. So I don't know exactly what happened. I only know that we killed 400 units. I'm guessing they attacked us somewhere here. So if we can go ahead, we click play, we see what happens. We can also go step by step. I want to go step by step at this point because I don't, I don't want it to fly by there. He attacked here. And this is a very, when you get attacked like this, you don't get to see all the details, all the nitty gritty. If we attack, we will get to see very much uh, more of this in detail. But we'll get the overview here. They attacked with 2400. So there is 2400. They lost 400. They attacked this unit. That's our strongest basic infantry unit, militia. And nobody died. That is very, very good. I'd like to see that. I think... He lost readiness, which is like a modifier. I think I talked about that last time. Modifier to overall strength. We stood firm. Okay, good. And that's it. Nothing else happened. I don't think anybody else... We would have seen here if somebody approached our territory. Fortunately, nobody did. So I'm glad to see that. Okay. So I'd say we're done. There's no other battle. So let's move out of that. That was the history. The vidcom, that, we already looked at that. That's the screen here. We can look at that stratagem. Let's look at that stratagem. I want to see. Which one was that again? This one, Blitzkrieg. Executed by the Staff Council. We don't have a Staff Council, but we can use our main guy, Supreme Command Council Director. What happens? Mechanized forces attack plus 60. Mechanized. And action points is increased by 30. But they're going to be not so good on defensive. It can't do entrenchment. And 60 AP, oil consumption start of turn. Okay, so we're going to lose some oil there if we do that. Uh, do we honestly have mechanized? Mechanized, definitely, I'm sure, would be something like the cross billy, right? Now that's motorized, right? It's, it should say tracked here, I think, to, for it to be mechanized, I'm pretty sure. If we go back out, remember the biker that we have here, I think? wheel motorized well, yeah i don't think that we have anything mechanized we can't actually use it right now otherwise we could go for that anyway so he's here right now let's see we're thinking he has 2000 but i'm thinking he has 2400 no he lost 400 yeah we do know he has 2000 so that's a pretty good indication here uh, we can look at his numbers maybe in more detail can we get a little bit more information your redness 61 it's gone down a lot he attacked this one our redness still 100 Defending, you don't get affected by that very much. 
So what else do we have? Morale is 40. Our morale was 86. I think we're in much better shape now. Let's say we just attacked with a militia. What would we get? If I move in here by right clicking, one unit, it's poor odds there. But as you know, we get concentric attack as we get more units around. They get a little bit of an outline there, as you can see. 5 to 1, 8 to 1. Our modifier is 400% there. Yeah, and what does he have for modifier here? Redness modifier negative 37 on hit points and on his attack values. Okay, so that's good. Defender 11. We think it's 11. Okay, that's based on 1100. He doesn't have 1100. He has 20, 2000, you know. So there is that. So this number that they show here is probably not correct then. Anyway, we do also have this unit here. These line troops. Redness is not up to 100 yet. He was just recruited. Morale hasn't gone up. You have to, I think you have to wait for this. Pretty sure. If we move him up, that's an infantry unit. He's good in bad terrain. If I press 1, we could move our units around and let them just... Let's just move around. Wait one more turn. We'll take this one here. Move it over there. This is open terrain, so we should have our... Our, mm, our mode or mechanized, what do you want to call them here? The uh, non-infantry units. We should have them in open terrain. This is also kind of open. It's agricultural. Let's move them up here. Now, this is going... Uh, I think it's looking pretty good. If I were to attack with him right now... Remember, redness is not great. So, one to three there. We get a negative modifier on redness. We don't want to do this right now with him. Yeah. So, let's wait with him a little bit here. And I don't think he can be budged. They're not going to be able to take him out. I don't think so. Because if you look at the numbers, don't forget... Uh, this one here. They have 52 when they're on the defense, basically. So there is that. Okay, well anyway, that's it. I think I have to leave it here. Yeah, this is the, the pace of the game, <laughs> unfortunately. So if you like this, come back next time and we'll play more of Shadow Empire with the Oceania DLC. I guess.